welcome back to the Read Connected podcast. We're here today with Rosemary Ramos, who most of her friends, clients, and colleagues know her as Rosie from Joy Skin Atelier, which mm-hmm. is in Charlestown, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. We're really happy to have you here today, Rosie. Oh, I'm happy to be here and honored that I am a guest on your podcast because I really enjoy listening to you guys. Ah, we're so grateful. You're such a big fan and a great friend and inspiration to us too. So we're really happy to have you here and to talk a little bit about your journey and your path. Okay. So I'm going to rewind it and go all the way back, probably to places I don't even know about yet. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about your journey in getting to this space and place where you've become not only an owner and founder of your own business, but really somebody who shares your whole self in the work that you do every single day. So for those of you who don't know Rosie, Rosie is in my mind, a master esthetician who does beautiful work in blending organic, natural materials and different tools and and different treatments to be able to support people who come in who want to take care of themselves, right? And really not only to take care of their skin and help them to get in touch and in tune with what they need to feel good and be well, but really Rosie, I mean, your energy just shines through everything you do, not only as a friend and as a human in this world, but also in the work that you do. And I know that's no easy task. No. And, (laughs) you know, I'm curious about what got you to this stage in place to be able to hone your craft and to be able to share your light with so many others as they're trying to take care of themselves. Well, um, the first word that popped into my mind was journey because mm. it's definitely been a journey and one that I had no idea how it was going to play out at the very beginning. Um, and I'll I'll really start more at the beginning of why I chose this career and mm. when I chose this career. Yeah, please. I, um, it was really born out of necessity, frankly. Um, I had always been very interested in taking care of myself and getting my nails done and always wanting to get a facial and a massage. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I was raised by, I'm one of four youngest girls, first gen Puerto Rican, Mm -hmm. uh, raised by a single mother. And so, you know, all of those things were really big luxuries in our family. And so it wasn't necessarily something that I did often, but it was something Mm -hmm. that I always just was, you know, thought champagne wishes caviar dreams um so i did it when i could and they were really big luxuries to me when i did do them you know even just something as simple as getting a haircut or my nails done Mm -hmm. and um right out of high school i just got a full-time job i didn't really know what i wanted to do and i became a very young mom at the age of 23 and that was a really big turning point for me because it was you know what am i going to do how can i be a mom and be present, mm. but I also needed to make a living. And I just one day just put two and two together and I was like, you know, I really love skincare. Mm. Why don't I go to aesthetic school? And so I looked into it immediately. I took a tour at Catherine Hines Institute in, Wo- in Woburn, Massachusetts. This was, you know, 27 years ago. And I enrolled in the course. It was $5,000 and it was a lot of money to me. And of course, mm-hmm. you know, thank God for. Fannie Mae. Um, and I started school. And of course, through the support of my family, because Madison was in existence, he was a little boy, he was a baby, he was, he was months old. Um, my mom took care of him. I went to, I went to school part time. My mom took care of him. My sister took care of him. And six months of school back then in the state of Massachusetts to be certified, you just needed 30, 300 hours mm-hmm. of, um, of aesthetic schooling. And then you would go and take the test and get your license. And I just happened to where I would go get my nails done and get my hair cut. Um, the gentleman who cut my hair, who happened to be the owner of this spa and salon in Worcester, Massachusetts, um, found out that I was going to study school. And he said, you have a job when you get out of school, if you want to come work for me. And I was like, yeah, this is great. Mm. And got out of school. I got my license and I got my, I got my first job mm. and it was really, it was in school that I knew the minute I started to touch my first face, I, it was just so natural to me and the love was born then. Mm. I had no idea at that 
point in time that this career would literally become one of the biggest joys in my life. I say, always say two things. I'm on this earth to be two things. Uh, my son's mom and an esthetician so that I can take care of so many people. And that rings true. It rang true back then. It rings true today. Um, that's really where it all started. I was really fortunate to work for someone who at that time, I mean, the spa business was booming. It was like when you went to the spa, it was such mm -hmm. a luxury to go to the spa and it was so incredibly busy. It afforded me to work part time and it afforded me to be home and to volunteer at Madison School. Um, I hope it's okay that I say his name. Yeah, I, I don't think you would mind. <laughs> um, and, and so it was wonderful. I happened to just become incredibly passionate, so much so that I would always ask for education. It wasn't something I could really afford outside of the job, but my boss had this program where all of the retail that you sold, you would make 10% of the retail but he would match that 10% and he would put it in an educational fund for you. Mm. And when you reached a certain amount, $500 at that time, you would be able to spend it on a class or traveling somewhere to go to a, a trade show just to learn more. Mm -hmm. So I would spend so much money that I would actually have a negative in my educational fund. And I basically made a deal. I said, would you consider me being the lead esthetician and you send me out for education, I will come back, I will impart the education and I will train. And he said, yes. And at that point in time, I I was in charge of 12, 12 therapists. It wow. was on the massage side because we did body treatments mm -hmm. and it was on the aesthetic side. And I worked for him for eight years and there was a turning point. This was a really big turning point in my career because um, he, was expanding so much so because he had a very large hair salon at the top of the building that he owned and downstairs with a spa. And he said, I'm really thinking about becoming an Aveda concept. What do you think? Um, and I was so, you know, I look back and I think about it now and um, there was such an admiration and a mutual respect between the two of us that he really valued my opinion. Mm. Um, and I don't know if it was because, you know, we were we were both Puerto Rican and, and it was really, you know, it was really hard back then. It's like you didn't, there weren't a lot of minorities who were doing um, things that we were doing, frankly. He was a big pioneer in the city because he had just a great, huge name in, in the industry, in the beauty industry. And he also did a lot of things for the community as well. Mm. Um, so I felt, I felt so privileged and honored to be working for him. Um, and he was a family man and that meant a lot, a lot to me because, you know, family is everything yeah. to me. And he also understood he, that I was a single mom at the time. And he really did give me a lot of, um, flexibility with things, with my schedule. If it had to change, he would say, listen, I can't, I can't change everybody's schedule. And I would just say, listen, it's really important. And he would always just say, okay, it's okay. Yeah. Um, which I was so grateful for. Um, I'm going to actually pause you there because you brought up so many great points and a big part of why we wanted you to come on here and tell your story is because you were probably one of the brightest, most intelligent people I know. Not only mm -hmm. do you shine this beautiful light, but you are just a consummate learner who wants to just learn and explore and devour information, not just about your trade, but also about, you know, life. You're such a student of life, which we've been saying so many times on this podcast lately. Um, but you you brought up some of the, the things that Jelani actually said in episode one, two, where he was talking about how when you show up somewhere, you have your skills, you have the things that you've been training for, You've developed mastery in a lot of different areas or whatever area that you're focusing in and whatever you're doing, whether you're auditioning for a part on Broadway mm. or for some other performance or you're auditioning or, you know, trying to go through the motions to get a job or to even, you know, earn the respect and trust of a potential client, yes. right? It's not that you are selling your skills. The skills are wonderful. And of course, that's a big part of why people would would call on you to work with them and to help them. But more than that, like Jelani said, he's like, you're selling yourself. You're showing yeah. up and you are sharing a part of yourself. And the most important thing that you can do is be authentic and be real. And I imagine that your boss that you're referring to saw that in you. 100%. 
I mean, I, th I think you saw it in me be before I had even realized it myself, yeah. frankly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you bring up, you just literally, my mind just opened up when you just said that. Uh, you know, I also want to be really clear about, because um, this is a big vulnerability piece for for perhaps people, younger people who are listening or mm -hmm. young women who are mm -hmm. listening who want to start a business, open a business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that term, fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. I, I was definitely doing that in that beginning, in the beginning, because I really didn't have the confidence. Yeah. Um, it was not something that I led with, but I knew in my mind that if I just like, just believe it before it happens, believe in yourself before it, it's there. Yeah. And and that that took me that took me a long way until the bus stopped and dropped me off to say, get real, wake up, lean in, be authentic. Mm -hmm. And and so much changed for me when that happened. But um, I don't want to interrupt you. No, that's often the, the transformative point in a person's journey and in a person's life too, is mm -hmm. to be able to like, just own it and be like, oh, I'm really good at this. You yes. know, this is something I can share with others. Yes. That can yeah. be an inspiration for other people. I mean, you know, again, it's not just about skincare. It's not just about wellness. It's it's really about putting these pieces together and acknowledging that you can take care of yourself, mm. that you can share your light and your energy with other with others and inspire that in others. Mm. And I feel like that is such a an incredible responsibility, but also, um, you know, such an amazing privilege. Right to help people to see in themselves what sometimes they don't see for themselves. For sure. And and literally, you're you're you know pulling back some of the layers for them. Yeah. Not only physically, you know, getting rid of the dead skin, but also <laughs> you know helping them to see the beauty inside of them and and cherishing and honoring that. And it's it's a beautiful process. And you know, you talked about you know, going to the spa and taking care of yourself. And you know, I think you and I both grew up with really strong mothers mm. who worked really hard. hard to take care of us. And that was their main priority. And oftentimes some of that kind of fell by the wayside. You know, they would take care of themselves and present themselves beautifully, mm. but their priority was always us. 100%. So it, I think for me, at least, sometimes it's difficult to separate, you know, the, the joy and the purpose in the work that I do with the wellness and the self-care for myself. Mm. And, and you honestly are, are somebody who inspires me to, to do more of that. Thank you. Um, and I, I'm so grateful for it. Well, everyone deserves to 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 feel, just to feel good. Mm. And, you know, when you feel good, you know, your perception of yourself changes. Um, it's just what I always preach all the time. Mm. And and it's what I truly, truly believe. And, and this, you know, along this journey, when I started off, it was, you know, a luxury and, you know, you're doing facials and you know, you're selling retail and, and you're rebooking your client. And that's really, that was the focus, right? It was all monetary and it was like, you were popular and how booked out were you? And, um, and then I had a very big transition where I know I'll, I'll go back to the story, um, where my boss was asking me, you know, should I become an innovative concept salon? And when you become mm -hmm. a, at that time, when innovative concept was, that was all you sold. That's all you did. Mm -hmm. It was like one line, and that was a really big deal because the um, the investment of that was was costly. And I said, I can't tell you an answer on something I don't know. And he says, Well, what mm -hmm. if I send you down south for an immersion class? They're doing a one week long boot camp immersion, and I just thought, oh, Yes, please send me. <laughs> Because I'm like, a little vacation, a little spa, <laughs> education. I wish, um, I wish my uh, conferences and professional <laughs> development included uh, spa days. No, too. <laughs> there's some, there's definitely some major perks um, to being in the industry that I am. And so he sent me down there. I met some incredible people. And, those incre and as I was working, you know, one of the things that you had to do at the end of the week was, it was basically boot camp class and it was a lot of education on ingredients that that opened up a big thing for me it was like oh i should probably know where things come from mm. who grows them um what indigenous culture do these things come from mm -hmm. is it sustainable um are the people who grow and pick these herbs and spices are they treated well and that mm -hmm. was a big turning point for me because it was like oh my goodness there's a whole like we're literally peeling this is a big deep dive this is a rabbit hole mm -hmm. and they offered me a job aveda offered me a job <laughs> to be 
basically what they called a purologist. And what you would do, my, what they were asking me to do is, we'd like you to travel around in the tri-state area to teach spa. Yeah. And that to me was like, yes, yes. So, so now I come back, tell my boss, you should do it. It's, I think it's a great line. They're a responsible line. Uh, they care about what they're doing, the quality of their product. And it's, um, and it's a non-toxic line we didn't use those words back then. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, okay, he did it. So I waited a, a month or two. I actually went through the interview process with Aveda. And I remember the day that I, I basically had to basically tell him that I was leaving. And I was so nervous. He was a big gardener. He would do all of the landscaping outside. And I remember starting my day and I got there early and I went outside and I was, how are you doing? We're just, you know, chit chatting. And I said, I wanted to talk to you. And I told him and I could just see his face just like, <laughs> and he says, what do you want me to say to you? And I said, I, I, I just want you to be supportive. Like just say, I have your, I have your blessing mm. because everything you've done for me in the last eight years, I just appreciate so much. And this is not, I want to leave here feeling like if I needed to come back, I could come back, mm -hmm. but that you were being supportive of me. And he said, yes. And that basically propelled me into, I traveled a little and I learned really quickly mm -hmm. that I didn't like traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the teaching part. I met a lot of people. I was so nervous. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Definitely had imposter syndrome um, and didn't even know what it was at the time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that was around the time where my son was like, you know, leaning into like 11, 12. And um, I really needed to be at home. So I took a full-time job uh, with my sister who owned a clothing company, and which kept me home. And I decided that I would, I would go into Aveda. What they would do is they would send me into salons and spas that were struggling, their aesthetic department. And I would go in and kind of revamp, do a boot camp, mm -hmm. reteach, um, rewrite a menu. And I had decided that I was going to pick probably the best place that I had gone in and revamped. Mm -hmm. And I found this little place uh, on Newbury Street. And I said, I was looking for a part-time job. And they were like, do you have any experience? And I gave them my resume. They were like, you're hired. <laughs> um, of course. And I loved it. It was like a little salon. It was one room. I had a sink the size of like, you know, a bowl. Um, but it allowed me to be home when I needed to be home for my son. And I, I, at the time we lived in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, that's where he was going to school. I was raising him and I would always drive by this coffee shop and it was like a new building, like a little, I wouldn't call it a strip mall, but kind of a strip mall. And there was a salon, a coffee shop, and there was an empty space in the middle of this coffee shop. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can open a business. I'm going to open a business. I'm going to open a business. And I went in, I asked what the rent was. I didn't even know the lingo of like, what do you charge per square foot? I was just like, oh, what do you charge a month? And and it was beyond what I could ever afford. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Four years later, I'm still working for my sister. I'm still working part-time and the space becomes available again. And I talked to my brother-in-law and I said, I really want to open a business. And he has a lot of experience. He's an entrepreneur, he's a lawyer, he you know, has many little hats that he wore and and I just knew I could trust his advice and and I remember I said I, I know I can do this and so we went we checked out the space and it was a hefty price at that point in time and he we're in the parking lot and I said what I don't even know what I'm doing I don't even know how to write a business plan I, I he's like kid he's like do you know how to make money <laughs> and I said I do and he goes then you're gonna be fine you can do it and I remember getting a personal loan for an astronomical amount. And I didn't really put two and two together, which was probably a good thing because if I really concentrated on the amount that I borrowed, that would have kept me out for the next five years. Mm -hmm. And I pulled it together. I My sister came in as a silent partner. She came in, she did my books and I created, we created this beautiful space. Mm. And my whole concept was I wanted a really small, intimate space where you could really cater to someone's needs beyond their skincare. It was the minute they walked through the door, making them feel like they were at home and making them feel incredibly special, making them feel like there was a place where they were 
wanted, needed, loved, Mm. even though it was just a facial. And I also wanted a little boutique where if you wanted to pick up like a beautiful scarf or a nice lipstick, just something to throw in your bag to make you feel like you had an experience, Mm. that was was the place. And it was called Piel Skin Boutique. And my sister and I owned it for five years. And at the end of five years, I think I I earned my MBA. Um, A lot of sleepless nights (laughs) because you learn very quickly. Are we going to make payroll? Uh Are we going to make rent? Oh, their their taxes to pay. Um, that was a really big learning experience. At the end of five years, Madison was going off to college, his first year of college, and I I knew I, I wouldn't be able, I just didn't want to go on. I didn't want to keep doing it. I'm like, I'm let we sold it. We sold the business, mm. which we were very fortunate to another esthetician who to this day still has the business. Oh, wow. Um, she's just moved locations into a town next to her. And um, I have to say I'm I and, and I'm really proud of that because that was something that I had no idea what I was doing, but I believed in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had, of course, other people who believed in my concept. Um, and that will never be lost on me. And someone else is now thriving in a business that was started by me, yeah. started by my sister. Um, and not a lot of people get to say that. And then I ended up going to work for corporate and quickly, quickly realized um, I lost my joy. Like I was not happy. Mm. And I remember I was the director at um, a med spa and I would get ready for work. And one day I was so miserable and I really wasn't even good at that. I wasn't good at the management piece. I was good at like one-on-one, taking care of one person, having a conversation with one person. Metrics is not my strength. Um, Accounting is not my strength. Um, But I quickly realized realized you can hire people to do those Mm -hmm. things. So why don't I just focus on the one thing that I do really, really well, and that's the people piece. And my hands were an underestimated magic mm-hmm. magic wand. Um, I can attest to that. <laughs> thank you. So one day I just said, I just need to find my joy. Yeah. And I think two weeks later, I quit that job. I had been looking at a space. I met a woman who had had space in Charlestown. I had then now moved to Charlestown. Um, and she said, oh, I have a space. And I went to go see it and there was a massage therapist in the space. And she said, you can share the space with her. And I said, oh, no, 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 I don't want to share a space with anybody. I wanted to, I mean, with PL, we had, you know, six employees and I just knew I'm like, you know what, instead of having employees and a front desk and a fancy computer and a beautiful desk, I'm just going to be a one, I'm just going to be a one man band open. I'm going to make your appointment. I'm going to actually do the facial. I'm going to ring you out. I'm going to rebook your next appointment. I'm going to do the laundry. I'm going to be the cleaning lady. I'm going to be all those things Mm -hmm. and just keep it really small and simple because bigger is not, doesn't mean more. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and that was like the big, that was the big change for me. Um, and the one thing when I started joy, joy skin atelier, Mm uh, was one thing I said to myself and promised, I'm not going to worry about money. I'm just going to I'm just going to really focus and really lean into the love piece of my job mm. and really take care of people and give them my time beyond whatever they booked so that I could be a good listener and a lot of my listening and my feeling is with my hands it's not necessarily with my ears and that changed my work my work took a 180 and it became an incredibly intuitive and if I could use the word spiritual experience for myself and then I started to realize that I was really connecting with people on such an incredible deep level and and my mind just opened up and along with my heart as well Mm. um and that was six years ago this July eek (laughs) where does the time go I think that's probably around the same time that you and I met. Yeah, we met at the vineyard. Yeah. I was actually doing, Joy was doing a pop-up at a yoga retreat in the vineyard at where Edgar Town, mm-hmm. Edgar Town, mm-hmm. and you and I met serendipitously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think anything's by accident. No, yeah, not at all. Yeah, I think that's it. it it's an incredible story and an incredible journey, and a, a lot of our listeners and a lot of the clients that. Jerry and I share are trying to find their path because they don't necessarily feel like they fit into 
whatever they think they're supposed to be doing. And mm. sometimes there's a lot of conflict inside of them as they're trying to figure out what are their skills? Mm. What are the things that they're really good at? What are their strengths? What are some of those skills that maybe can be tweaked or improved upon? Mm. And then what do you do with that? How do you make that something that's not only just kind of going through the motions or a job that you show up for, but how does that become a part of your purpose? as you're navigating through life. One of the most beautiful things, I know there's a lot of um, negative connotation around younger generations that sometimes people will have a lot to say about, you know, uh, the younger people in the world right now, but I see such beauty in them as they are really inspired to try to do well mm -hmm. and to find a path that is meaningful to them yeah. and can support and do well for others. It's it's such a beautiful thing to hear some of their inner thoughts and their inner aspirations. Mm. And for you to share your story and and to think about how, you know, you going to get your hair done at a salon turned into not only a job but a career with somebody who believed in you. Yes. Who, you know, shared their knowledge, their joy space with you to not only again not only to show up and work in a position but you really became somebody who got to impart your knowledge on others you learned not only for yourself to be successful but to pass that along to those that you worked with mm -hmm. who were passing it on to others and i think that's such a beautiful thing this domino effect i think gets lost in the translation of everybody's busy days finding that source that passion and purpose inside of yourself and having the confidence, the courage, and the support to be on that path and to get on that journey is such an important thing. And I think it's so powerful, not just for individuals, but for the collective on so many different levels. Sure. I mean, it's a community, mm -hmm. right? Or community of people. I, to piggyback a little bit on, you know, what you said about this younger generation coming up, you know, what distinguishes them I feel is that they they want to be happy. Mm. They want to find joy. Mm. They also want to take care of this earth. Yeah. You know, they want sustainability and that inspires someone a little older like me. I think about the girls who work at Joy and they are younger and they're so inspiring and they take things mm. so seriously and um it, it's meaningful to them to actually do do what I do. I don't think you know, it wasn't as meaningful to me back then. It was a job. It wasn't as it was necessary. I loved it. I didn't realize how much I really loved it. Um, it this career has afforded me being able to meet incredible people, mm -hmm. being able to give back, mm -hmm. um, which is really important to me. Rosie, I'm sitting here in my chair, just leaning back and listening to two people who, uh, are so important to me that I love, respect, admire uh, two women that are strong and also compassionate. To have both of those things is not only good for women, it's good for men too. And uh, wow, this is just amazing for me to just sit back and listen to you both. There's a lot of themes that came out of your story. Mm. And, you know, one of them Alexis alluded to is um, belief in yourself. And a lot of times we need other people to help ourselves to realize that we can believe in ourselves despite mm -hmm. the uncertainty and then we give back to other people hopefully that they can believe in themselves to other people but there's something that stood out to me too knowing you rosie is that there's points along the way where you tuned into yourself to guide you mm. and with the way life is today so fast so Dare I say, you know, like addicted to technology where we're not tuning into ourselves mm. of the ability to tune into yourself, to guide what you're feeling, to guide what is next. What do you need? What might happen next based on, you know, what you're feeling? Because your feelings are a uh, reflection of what's happening to you mm. and it's good information to be able to reflect. And um, I think that's an important part here. Yeah, I agree. I don't know uh, at this point in my life. I think in, in most aspects of my life, I don't know how to be anything else or how to operate any other way other than to just go off of feeling and, and my moral compass and my emotional compass and my spiritual compass. And, and thank goodness that um, it all, it's just all really good uh, and positive. 
Um, and it's really nice to be able to, you know, impart that to people that I work on, but also impart that, you know, to people who work for joy, work at joy and mentor women. And, you know, we take care of men as well. Uh, everyone is important. I think about, um, you know, and I'm always thinking, it's like, how can we collectively at joy, how can we give more? How can we give a different experience? How can we make people take what they're feeling on the bed outside of the room and take it so that it lasts a little bit? Because, you know, I always think about when people come in and I'll always say to the girls, you know, I think the most important thing is to turn that switch on that nervous system for people because people come in so frenetic mm -hmm. and you know there's a lot of things going on in the world and people have kids and nannies and cars and this and people are sick and people are dying and people are trying to have children and um there's a lot of things that walk through our door mm -hmm. and when someone lies on the bed it's a very you know i don't know the magic bed where you just feel safe and warm and comforted and a lot comes out on those beds right a lot of people want to just kind of just let it all out and let it go to someone that they trust. We're really lucky. We have an important job. And I'm also really fortunate because I feel like I've attracted like-minded women to come and work and, and, and lead in the same way that I lead as well. Um, and we also give, you know, back to our community. The good thing is, is that taking care of yourself is no longer a luxury. It's, it's an absolute necessity, mm -hmm. um, but it still can be, you know, a luxury price item for people. And so, you know, a lot of the things that we do as well is like, you know, what is your budget? You know, what, what can we fit in your budget? Or if you can't see me as much as you want to, okay, let's figure out when you can come in so that you can feel and look good and, um, and then pass that along. Cause you know, when you feel good, especially when you have children or you have an ailing mother or you're taking care of a family member or your dog is sick, um, taking care of yourself, you'll be able to take care of all those other things. And so it just like, it spreads, it has this big energy band beyond, and it just started with a facial, you just walking through the mm -hmm. door, you know, we also do massage as well. Um, so yeah. Very positive ways to take care of yourself too. There's a lot of ways that people who are suffering can look for comfort and for them to go to you and want to be with you to do these things mm -hmm. that are very healthy things to, to take care of yourself is like you said, a blessing and um, people need it more than ever for sure. And, and permission to feel like they can take mm -hmm. care of themselves. I, you know, I, I wanted to get your feedback on that from you know, even the working women, you know, some patients that I work with to feel like they have permission to take care of themselves mm -hmm. when, when they have someone else going on. And, um, uh, you know, it's a healthy version of self care. You know, a lot of times just in mental health, I see people try to take care of themselves in ways that may not be the healthiest, but you know, for you to be there as a foundation that people want to show up. I mean, everybody knows that feeling when you go, you want to go see someone. That's mm -hmm. a special feeling, Rosie. Mm -hmm. And as Alexis was saying, a lot of it is because of who you are as a person mm -hmm. and who you are as a person also didn't just magically happen. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm thinking as I'm thinking of my mom as you're saying that and I get a little choked up because, you know, my bones, who I am is it's my mom. You know, I work hard because she worked hard. I value family because that was the big message growing up. It's like nothing matters but family. Um, treating people really well. Um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, I and I just just owe so much to her. Um, She's such a beautiful person and she's so beautiful. I, you know, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to bring some tie something in when people come in and they're like, well, tell me what you think about Botox and, and should I do it? And should I not do it? And, and I always say to women, the most beautiful women that I know are the women in my family and they are aged and they have wrinkles and, uh, but they have the most beautiful smiles and they have the most beautiful way of expressing themselves. And, Botox can't give you that. <laughs> Get it? Sure, if that makes you feel good. But I that just like everything about everything about the beauty of my mom and the beauty of my sisters um, ties in with what I do. You know, my this little atelier that I own, um, 
I wanted it to be something like a bodega. A bodega is a small little, you know, corner store. And my grandmother, who, my mom's mom, um, used to have a bodega in Bronx in, in New York City. And I remember when I opened Joy, I wanted to surprise my mom and kind of give homage to, to her mom. And because, you know, we are a generation of women who are hardworking and independent and, um, and strong. And I remember, you know, we were still setting up and we weren't open yet. And my mom came and, you know, my mom is, um, has some, you know, challenges being mobile, but she made the effort to come and see the space. And I wanted to like surprise her because I wrote Bodega on our door and, and she looked at it and I said, you know what this is? And, and I said, I wanted to, I wanted to tie in something really incredible that your mom gave you ethic in this, you know, little corner store, even though it was skin, we weren't selling, you know, milk and eggs, but um, it was just such a, such a proud moment for me to be able to kind of give that to her. Like, here I am because of you. I'm strong because of you. I'm successful because of you. My success is joy. And my mission is to, to spread that. And um, yeah, hopefully make her really happy. What a beautiful story. I think that's going to make a lot of moms really happy. Yeah. I'm grateful for you to share that with us and with, with our listeners today because, you know, my brother and I are both very close with our mom who has inspired yes. us. And I will never forget, I had the amazing honor of presenting overseas at a conference in Ireland and brought my mom along. Oh. It was the first time she saw me really like do my thing. Oh. And it was, she came along with me for her 60th birthday. And I'll never forget that I think just sitting there in the audience listening oh. was probably a better gift than anything else we did that entire vacation. Right. Um, and to be able to do that, to be able to work and live in the honor of those who supported and helped us to get to this point, I, I think is the greatest honor and point of appreciation that surpasses any other success or point of excellence in anybody's life. So thank you for sharing that. Rosie, you're, you're just, you're flowing so beautifully and, and I'm just so impressed by the confidence in how you talk about the work that you do. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's actually nice to, to hear me tell the story because I, it makes me really stop and reflect and, and acknowledge you know, how much I have done and accomplished. Cause you know, when you're on the trajectory of just moving forward and trying to like get there, um, you, you forget to stop mm -hmm. and you forget to just say, wow. Um, I was just away for about 10 days and I walked into work on Tuesday and I was so excited. No, Wednesday. I was so excited to go back to work. And one of the girls on the one girlfriends I had gone away with, she said, wow, that's so nice that you like are mm. so eager to get back to work. And I'm like, I love my job. I love my place. And every time I open the door to Joy, I go, hi, Joy, I'm here. And it's just like, I'm so fortunate. I'm so lucky. And it's so nice to when, when your employees walk through the door and they're like, oh, this is my happy place. Mm. It just makes me just shine. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I feel really lucky. You know, I think one of the things that I, you know, want to do. And one of the things that you mentioned is like, you know, I think the trajectory of, of our path and our journey, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, we're still on it. I'll always be on it. Um, and it just keeps getting better and better. I think that's kind of like with age too, you realize like you really fall into yourself. You, you get comfortable in who you are. And it is so easy for me to talk about what I do because finally, for the first time in my life, and it's been a little bit of time for the first time in my life, I, um, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I am here to help a lot of people. And that is an incredible gift that not everybody has. And I, I feel, I feel like I have like a magic wand. Mm. And that is just, uh, I, it's like, I feel like I have a superwoman cape on, mm -hmm. an invisible one. And it's just like, my responsibility is to take care of women and to make empower them and make them feel beautiful. 
and impart my knowledge. And the other piece to my job that I, I want to mention is I refer so many people to who need help with diet. I refer for so many people who shouldn't be seeing me, they should be seeing a massage therapist mm. or a therapist, maybe talk to someone or just give them space in my place to just sit and maybe read a book or have a cup of tea mm. or have a place to let them know that if they have nowhere to go, come and sit here. Um, and that just feels so good. It's a community of, of these professional people who can take care of each other. And that is has been really o an eye opener for me in my line of work because it actually helps what I do. Um, and yeah, I, you know, when I say esthetician, I'm like, esthetician? I'm I don't think of you as an esthetician. I think that's a really important role, but I think you embody so much more. Mm. And I think, again, going back to what I said before about you are constantly on a journey to learn more mm. and to, to have the humility to say, I'm not sure yet. Mm. And I want to keep learning. I want to keep evolving. I want to keep figuring out a way to give and do better. 100%. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And I think, you know, when it comes down to being successful and owning a business, it's, it's so much more than just, you know, the bottom line or the outcome or mm. how many people you get to see in a week. Like sometimes the profession sometimes leads to that, right? Mm -hmm. And, and sure. sometimes it's a means to an end and, and that's a point in some person's journey as it is for everybody to survive. But I think what you're describing and what you're sharing is that once you get to a certain point where you've mastered your skills, you've recognized and accepted this is my purpose and you've, you've taken on the responsibility of I want to be able to and I'm fortunate to be able to share and give light and joy to others mm -hmm. so that they can spread it to others is, is such a beautiful thing. And, and I am grateful in my role to be able to, I'm sure, Jerry, you feel the same way, to hear people get to that point in their journey where they start mm -hmm. to put the pieces together because, you know, not everybody's journey is going to look exactly the same. And in fact, we don't need everybody to do the same thing no. and to take the same path. You know, the, div the diversity and variability in, in people's strengths and even their weaknesses and recognizing what they need to do, what they can do, what's mm. possible is such a beautiful thing. I think that that part of humanity is often overlooked mm. or looked down upon. But it's really often the things that help us to grow and to inspire us and to find our passion. Yeah. And when people walk through your door and lay on the bed and they start to, you know, peel back the layers of what they brought in with them and feel safe and comforted to be able to just be present and to be taken care of, that vulnerability is, again, we talked about courage before. I think that's courageous to even show up to do that for yourself and mm. allow for somebody else to care for you is such a beautiful thing and what a wonderful honor that you have. I, I do have an incredible honor. I have an incredible honor to take care of people. I have an incredible honor to mentor young women. Yes. You know, I think about joy and I think about my own experience and how I started and my, I, I say to the girls, you know, this won't be, if this is your stepping stone, if this is your foundation, I'm honored because this won't be your last job. Mm. And perhaps you will to own your own business. And I encourage that and however I can help and get you there um, is my responsibility. And that's the other side of my job. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the behind the scenes side of my job is really encouraging, really taking care of the people who work for me, who take care of other people. Yeah. I think that is equally important to create a work environment where I always say to the girls, walk in here like you own the place mm. and you will always do right and you will learn. Um, you know, I think about the people who take care of the things and, and do the things that I don't do well, you know, my bookkeeper and an accountant and, um, you know, I think about my family. I think about they're my springboard, right? It's like mm -hmm. who I can, when I am having a bad day, mm -hmm. I can turn and call my sister or I'll call my husband or I'll call you and I'm having a bad day or I'm not having a good moment. You know, I too is not, I'm not all joyous 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I I really work hard at trying to live the life that I try to preach and instill in all of the people around me. And that's not perfect um, because I too am affected by the things in the world. And, you know, I'm a woman of 51 in menopause. Um, 
and afflicted with all of those things, right? And and those of you who can't see Rosie, I know you would never know that she's 51 <laughs> at that stage of her life. <laughs> I, you just look at my hair and color. Um, but I, I yes. Uh, and the other thing too, you know, as I'm talking, as I talk, I try not to mention too much my my son because everything I do, I do for him because mm. I always wanted to be an incredible example to him. You know, one of the things that so full circle that Joy right now is bringing me is the ability to not work all the time so that I can have some time to spend with my son, with my mom, with my sisters, having some serious family time. Um, and that also has come through a lot of hard work and working many days every Saturday. If you asked my son mm -hmm. when he was growing up, there wasn't a Saturday where I could really make him pancakes because I was always, he always, this big spa day was Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were there were times where I wouldn't work on a Saturday and he's like, wow, you're home. Mm -hmm. like you're, mm -hmm. We're making breakfast. And that to me is, you know, I don't want to say I'm at the end of my career, but I'm 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 I feel like I'm coming to the crescendo. Mm, um, well said. <laughs> and it's going to be, and it feels so nice because it's going to be. Um, it's it feels really sweet because it's not going to be a a hard goodbye. It's just going to be like, okay, what is the next evolving phase of this career that is so part of my life and has been, frankly, a part of my family's life. Mm. Because uh, they've lived through it as well. So I actually, before we get to the what's next part of your journey, I, I want to touch back on what you said before about when people come into your care and feel safe and feel comfort comfortable and comforted. Because it's it's bringing about and eliciting so many thoughts about humanistic psychology for me that really resonated as I was learning it in my studies and my my training. And, you know, you go back to Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which most people have learned about or seen on social media in some way now at this point of life. <laughs> and and really, you know, it, it wasn't meant to be a pyramid and, and Scott Barry Kaufman did some really brilliant work kind of unpacking a lot of Maslow's work. Um, and he transformed the pyramid, which was intended for marketing purposes to help business people to understand how to be motivated and successful. Like what are the key components to get you to this um, aspect of life where you can just find your purpose and, mm. and live in that moment. Um, but it wasn't meant to be a pyramid because there aren't really like steps and stages that are laid out. Like mm. follow this formula and you'll get to this point. Um, so Scott Barry Kaufman, who's a um, a humanistic psychologist, among many other things, a podcaster himself, who I really respect and admire a lot of the work that he does and puts out in the world. Um, he transformed it into uh, an image of a sailboat, thinking about how if you have certain needs met, kind of at that foundation of feeling safe, feeling connected, mm. having the things that you need, it keeps your sailboat steady, mm. despite any of the different turbulence that you might experience when you're out at sea. You know, if the waves kick up, if the wind kicks up, if you can find some stability to find a little bit of balance mm. in the hull, in the bottom part of the boat, um, then you can actually take advantage of the wind that comes through the sails. And the sail in his depiction is more focused on, you know, can you find your, your purpose? Can you experience love fully? And can you actually get to this place where you are, uh, you know, fully transforming your experience? to be something that is really encompasses what it's like to be human, what our purpose is on this planet. And it's such a beautiful thing. And, and when you talk about, you know, people coming into your care and again, like I just said, <laughs> feeling safe and feeling connected and feeling comfortable, that's just such an important thing. And, and Jer, I, I, I know you experience this in your work especially as a therapist or, you know, even in your sports psychology work as people are coming in and being vulnerable. Mm. And I think this is such an important conversation to just put out there that vulnerability is scary. It is hard. And it often feels like you're kind of opening up a wound that you never know what's going to happen from it. And and you coming in here and talking about your story, it's, it's, it's sharing parts of yourself in a very vulnerable, open, beautiful way. And I, I want to just point out that when you can get to a point where you feel vulnerable, you feel open, oftentimes it might 
bring about a point of reflection or connection or passion and purpose that you maybe didn't realize was a part of you. And it might help you to kind of like explore something within yourself that you didn't even realize was operating inside of you. And and I want us to think about your story and that which you're sharing today in terms of our own lives and in the listener's lives to say, okay, what's going on it within me that, that brings me joy uh-huh. yeah. in combination with what my strengths and skills are or strengths and skills that you can continue to develop or to improve upon that might lead you to your own path of purpose. At this stage of life, you know, so many people say, oh, I have to have all these conditions in play perfectly before I make a move, before I make a change. And, I, you know, I'll share my story one day on the podcast that sometimes when you leap, even when the net's not there, the net will appear. Mm-hmm. And when you take that time to really get sure in yourself, feeling confident in your journey, in your experiences, I think that's what allows you to be able to find this path and to be able to figure out what exactly you're meant to do and what you're supposed to be doing, Mm. which in your beautiful story, it turns out to be, you know, a business owner and also a practitioner of that, which you love, which allows for you to mentor, guide and teach others to do the same. Mm -hmm. But that can look like so many other things for different people too. And I hope that the listeners who tune into the podcast and listen to this episode can can take a few moments to reflect upon their own journeys. Maybe write it down, maybe tell a friend, maybe record it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And kind of think about and take that moment, like you said, to appreciate mm. how much has gone into everything that we've done that's gotten us to this point. Um, and it takes a long time. Sure does. You know, it takes a long time to perfect trust in yourself and it takes a long time mm. to build faith. And those are the things that that you lean into. Those are the things that carry you. Those are the things that stabilize the boat, I I believe, for yourself. So that when the wind does come and it wants to take you in a certain direction, um, you have that anchor to be able to allow the wind to do that without it being a storm. Rosie, I want to point this out. You are, we've, we've been saying this in so many words, but you are such a great role model. Oh, thank you. And a leader. And it's not easy to do that because you have to put yourself on the line and do what you feel is right. Mm. And you're a great example, as we're saying, that you can do good and be successful at the same time. And boy, does the world need that. Mm. Yeah. And you're living proof. Oh, thank you. And it wasn't easy. And I know it wasn't easy. Yeah. I know you and I know it wasn't easy. And in many ways, look what you transformed. Mm. I'm proud. I'm really proud. Yeah. (laughs) And I can hope, I hope that I help other people, you know, even if I hope that, you know, anybody, even one person listening and they have any doubts and just lean in, take a chance. What's the worst thing that can happen? It doesn't work out. Then you know it doesn't work out and you just try something else. Um, and I know that that's a scary, that's a very scary concept. That's why a lot of people don't, don't make moves and they don't make changes. But, you know, we've got, we have one life and we're here right now. So you might as well just live it to the fullest. Um, and it doesn't have to be something huge like what, opening a business like right when you're younger or something like that. It, it could be in a lot of ways. You know, I, I hear patients sometimes, they're like great people, great character, great values. And they feel like they're not pre- like they feel like those things are not appreciated in the society we live in, mm. you know. And for me, I'm like, oh man, what a, I really appreciate you as a person. Yeah, I get to experience it. I get to understand it. Mm. And um, again, like you know, and, and to to say that it's always important. It's not just important when you have success and you have character and values. It's always important. Mm-hmm. So I just want to acknowledge that every step of the way in your story. All of it's important, not just the success of the business. Mm. No, I mean, the success of the business happened because of all of the, the hardship. Mm. You know, it's like all of the the sleepless nights and the, can I make this? Can I do this? Or will people come? Will people rebook? And, you know, the uncertainty of, of so many things and 
being tired, um, you know, going through some hardships, you know, in my personal life and still being able to show up. That's a challenge. Mm. Um, but my job also has, you know, I, I, when I step into the room and I'm ready to, to give, I, it takes me away. It really takes me away. And that has been its own gift to me. And, you know, when people like, people say to me, thank you so much, Rosie, this was amazing, blah, blah, blah. And I, my mind, I always say, no, thank you. Mm. Thank you, because this was my gift. And me giving is the biggest ugh, joy. Like it makes me so incredibly happy to give that no one will ever understand the happiness it gives me. And the happiness is my validation. So, you know, the thank you is just a cherry on, on top, you know? So thank you. I really, I, I really appreciate you saying that. And I actually feel that way. I can honestly say like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm fortunate. And with that, we will thank you for your time and your wisdom and sharing your story here with us today. Thank you. This was so nice. So grateful with you. for you. Spend time with you however I can. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Read Connected podcast. Please remember that this is a podcast intended to educate and share ideas, but it is not a substitute for professional care that may be beneficial to you at different points of your life. If you are in need of support, please contact your primary care physician, local hospital, educational institution, or support staff at your place of employment to seek out referrals for what may be most helpful for you. Ideas shared here have been shaped by many years of training, incredible mentors, research, theory, evidence-based practices, and our work with individuals over the years, but it's not intended to represent opinions of those we work with or who we are affiliated with. The Reconnected podcast is hosted by siblings Alexis Reed and Dr. Gerald Reed. Original music is written and recorded by Gerald Reed. Editing and recording was done by Cybersound Studios. If you want to follow along on this journey with us, the Reconnected podcast will be releasing new episodes every two weeks each season. So please subscribe for updates and notifications. Feel free to also follow us on Instagram at Read Connected Podcast. That's Read Connect Ed Podcast and Twitter at Read Connect Ed. We are grateful for you joining us and look forward to future episodes. In the meanwhile, be curious, be open, and be well. Mm -hmm.